If you ever wonder why computer security experts always say to never click on an email link before verifying and validating the source of the email, they say that because some hacks can simply happen as a result of curiosity. Clicking on an email link is basically like opening your house door to anyone who knocks on it. We often think that hackers are some highly skilled individuals or some entities with deep pockets. Although that is mostly true, there is still a significant number of low-level criminals that are capable of doing some serious damage and can make thousands of dollars per day using nothing more than a basic computer, some free software, and access to the internet. In this video, I am going to be that low-level nefarious individual and hack myself on a budget. I am doing this on my home network, so both the attacker and the victim's computer are within my local area network. But before I continue, I need to clarify that this video is for educational and awareness purposes only. Please do not use anything you learn from this video to hack other people's computers. It is immoral, criminal, harmful, and it is illegal. The tools that I will need to be using in this video are going to be a Raspberry Pi, which will be the attacker's computer, and a Windows 11 computer that will be the victim's computer. I'm going to install Beef software in the Raspberry Pi OS, and I am going to create a fake web page and embed a malicious script in it. Once all that is done, I will select my victim and send him or her an email link to my web page and wait for the victim to click on the link. Now obviously hacks like this can be more complex and more sophisticated than what I'm showing you here. So beef is just one of the thousands of tools out there, but this will at least give you an idea of how it works. When building a fake website, the more functional it is and the more credible it looks, the greater the chance is to make people fall for it. And if the website is capable of keeping visitors engaged for a certain period of time, the hackers will have enough time to gain more access to the system or even the entire network. Installing Beef on the Raspberry Pi OS is pretty easy and it takes less than 5 minutes. Simply open terminal window on the Raspberry Pi OS, type in the following commands. All the commands are in the description section of this video. Now that everything is installed, we can go ahead and launch Beef. If everything is done properly, this is what you should get. You will get two sets of similar IP addresses. The one here is the user interface URL, the hacker's interface in this case, and the one on the top is the hook URL, which will be the link that can be sent to the victim. As I mentioned before, this can be done in two ways. Hackers can simply send the link to the victim or embed a malicious script in what may look like a friendly web page and direct the user to it. 
The latter is the most effective method as it gives the attackers enough time to load more scripts on the victim's device. If you have noticed, the IP address that I'm using here is my local area network IP address, not my public address. In this scenario, if I send this URL to any device outside of my home network, this will not work. But if I run beef on a web server and use a public IP address, or if I enable port forwarding on my Raspberry Pi, anyone who clicks on my link and get on my webpage will allow me to go to work on their browser. Now let's go ahead and click on the IP address for the user interface. This will launch this web page. The username is beef. The password is the password that we created during the installation of beef. Up here on the left, you will see online browsers and offline browsers. Any user who clicks and stays on my web page will show up under online browsers. Once they navigate away from my web page or go offline, they will be automatically moved down to offline browsers. These two links here point to two different types of pages. One of them is a basic HTML page the second one is described as advanced. There is no difference as to what each page does. The advanced page basically has some photos and it is an example of a page that can be misleading to the visitors. As you can see here, since I clicked on the link, my browser is hooked already. So my computer IP address is showing under the online browsers. Now, when I right click on the web page, I can see the embedded script and this is the same script that I basically copied and inserted in the header section of the index page of my website. So let's go ahead and have some fun with beef. As you can see, I hooked my web browser. I'm going to go ahead and click on the IP address. In the detail tab, you can get to learn a lot about the targeted device Let's check out something under social engineering first and try this last pass module. I'm going to select it and click execute on the fake website browser. We will see that it is asking me to log in to LastPass account. I don't know why I'm being asked to do that, but I'm going to trust that there is a good reason for that. So I go ahead and put in my username and password and I didn't notice anything crazy. So I'm going to move on with my life. Now, what I just did is a jackpot for the hacker. I just handed the hacker my last pass password along with all my other passwords. Now, keep in mind that this will only work if multi-factor authentication is disabled in LastPass. LastPass is an excellent way of keeping track of passwords. I use it on a daily basis but I make sure my multi-factor authentication is enabled and I enter my trusted devices and permitted mobile devices. Let's see something else. In this situation, I am being asked to install a plugin. This seems so normal and it could be legit, but it is likely a scam if you suddenly get prompted to install a plugin without knowing what it is for and without initiating the process yourself. Let's do another one and try Google Fishing. I am now being asked to log in to my Google account. I understand that this login page is kinda outdated, but how many people would pay attention to such a minor detail? Plus, the hacker can build a whole new page that looks exactly like a current Gmail login page. Again, this will only work if multi-factor authenticator is not enabled in the Google security settings. This is why it is imperative to have some sort of authentication other than just the username and password. So here when I go and click on the command history, I can see the username and password. Under browser, we can see all these tools that can be used. These are designed for targeted attacks. Instead of shooting in the dark, hackers sometimes focus on targeting a weakness in a specific software and these tools here allow the hackers to know if the software is installed in the device and therefore exploit the weakness. If the weakness is detected, the hacker can exploit the weakness using other tools or 
can, for example, redirect the web browser to a fake website that looks exactly like the software developers page and prompt the user to install a fake malicious update. Using this module here, a hacker can even send an executable file after convincing the victim of the need for the installation. As you may have noticed, there are over 200 modules here and I certainly don't think that we have time to cover all of them in this video. But you guys get the idea. One last thing before signing out, this is not only applicable to computers with a certain operating system. Mobile devices such as cell phones are not immune to the attacks. If, for example, I send this Gmail phishing link to a cell phone, the outcome is going to be the same as sending it to a Windows, Mac, or a Linux operating system. With this, if you enjoyed this video, please like and mostly share and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Catch you in the next one.